Hey guys, it's Casey and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be going over with you guys the SPY, uh, today's market action. In addition, uh, I'm going to be discussing the top stocks that were the market movers on the day and also covering a few things that I think were relatively important news-wise uh, that, that may help give us some indication into the direction of the markets. So let's just hop into this. Uh, before we do a technical analysis, there's a couple of things that I want to go over in relation to uh, what was in the news. So I read an article today that talked on Forbes, actually Forbes.com, that discussed that they don't believe that the next stimulus package is going to continue or they're, that they're going to extend the unemployment um, benefits of the additional $600 uh, per week, which is significant. Now, nothing as of yet has come out definitively with the stimulus package. Um, no details have been confirmed per se. Uh, the Congress and the Senate is still uh, in the process of hammering out the details. There is going to be a stimulus package. You, you can almost guarantee it. But if they don't include the unemployment extension until you know until July of 2021, that's going to be a backbreaker. And I'm going to tell you why, if it isn't already obvious. Well, number one is, you know, again, as I touched in the last technical video, we have 40 million people that are unemployed right now. That's insane. Uh, I, I read an article the other day on a separate website that talked about that we have half of American working adult, uh, working adults that are unemployed. So, I mean, I, I don't possibly know how they could not extend the unemployment benefits because if they don't do that, what's going to happen is you're going to see an extreme uptick in foreclosures of homes. You're also going to see an extreme uptick in evictions. Also, you're going to see an extreme uptick in uh, car loans that are not getting paid. You're going to see an extreme uptick in credit card debts that gets defaulted on and, and everything else in between. So basically, it's almost like 2008 all over again, but this time intentional. You can't possibly have that. So I, I, you know, although the story came out that said that they're not going to extend it, I'd be shocked if they didn't. Um, if they did not extend it, I think that we'd run into a big problem. Now, um, on a slighter, more positive note, uh, the top stocks that were the market movers for today. Well, we had a few, actually. Uh, one of the top stocks that were the, for the movers for the day was FedEx. Now, FedEx, you know, FedEx is kind of one of those uh, stocks that just kind of have fallen into the abyss. They haven't really made a lot of news. Um, I remember when the stock was, you know, well, well below its, uh, its moving average. You know, of the people were making uh, comments stating that their delivery, deliveries uh, were significantly down because of the virus and that uh, Amazon was, um, was really uh, putting a dent in them. And they've, they've responded and they've bounced back very nicely. You know, they had a significant pop here because of the earnings, the fourth quarter earnings. So their fourth quarter actually, you know, just finished. You know their fiscal year and so which was july which is weird but that's that's how they do their fiscal year and they had really really good earnings so it popped very strong and um you know it sold off it didn't it didn't have a continuation if you notice here it popped up literally right into the resistance level of the 165 and it sold off typically one of two things happens this is usually the beginning of a continuation pattern to where it'll sell off and then tomorrow will be green or what may happen sometimes is you may actually see an immediate backfill uh, of the gap. I typically find that what happens is that there's a sell-off and then tomorrow is going to be a green day and a continuation, but we'll see. Another big uh, stock mover today, uh, let's take a look here, was Amgenin? How do we, how do we pronounce this uh, How do we pronounce this stock? Um, how do we uh, pull up this, this stock, the stock? Da, da, da. How do I say this? The stock ticker. Okay, uh, so Amgen was a big market mover today because uh, they received uh, a court upheld a patent infringement that apparently was really uh, kind of hanging over the company's head. You know, they do they deal a lot with you know medicine and 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 research and whatnot. They're in the pharma field, and so there was this you know if you guys don't know about the the whole pharma pharmaceutical industry and whatnot, it's all based on patents. And it's all based on, you know, who gets the hottest and latest drug and how much they can charge and whatnot. And so when you have a, a patent infringement that stays uh, over your head and whether you're being sued or the one suing, uh, typically what happens with those types of stocks is that they just kind of go flat. You know, I generally stay far away from pharmaceutical stocks just because, you know, one patent or one uh, trial study 
you know, could could move a stock 100 percent or, you know, I should say 70 percent up or down in a matter of days or weeks. And it's just just beyond volatile. Use them as use them as a speculative play, but not not something to not definitely not uh, should they be in your core portfolio. You know, you know, they're not going to be something that you're just going to, you know, I should say that you're banking on retiring on per se. So another market mover on the day was Netflix. And I read something that stated that uh, there was some television station or something that's, that was joining them. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, some TV series. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but they were up 6.72% you know, uh, on the day. So, you know, good for them, I suppose. Like, like I said, nothing, nothing definitive that I saw that would have caused them to spike up like this. And so let's go back to the overall direction of the market. And the overall direction of the market right now is the SPY. Now, looking at the SPY, you know, for today, we had another, we had a pop-up and we had a continuation. Some slight sell-off into the close, but if you take a look at the Fibonacci, Fibonacci levels, it literally popped up and it hit the 78.6% Fibonacci level. And then it just kind of, you know, pulled back a little bit. So that's kind of where we are. We have one more trading day before we go into the uh, holiday uh, extended weekend. And typically when you have ex extended holiday weekends, um, what happens is that the, the day after, uh, the day before is it can be a little slow in terms of trading and volume. So if you notice, take a look at the volume down here, it's actually pretty light. Uh, actually, actually, now think about it, take a look at the red days, it's been significantly higher than the buying. But um, yeah, overall, it's been relatively light. I do anticipate that there's going to be um, some additional light trading tomorrow, maybe some sideways action. I, I don't think the I think tomorrow is going to kind of it's going to kind of be a uh, a wash day. You know, won't be significant up or down. And you know, just taking a look at the overall trend of the market right now. You know, again, it's just it, it's kind of a sideways consolidation pattern. Um, you know, I, I read some articles a few days ago that stated that uh, the Federal Federal Reserve is now buying bonds of actual companies even companies that don't even need the money so and they're focusing on some of the big companies such as microsoft and uh, also apple so you know it's a little strange it's a little weird to think that the federal reserve is literally buying bonds of private companies to prop up the stocks when the stocks are at all-time highs and have no liquidity issues I, I don't know. It's just this is just a really weird time. Um, you know, it's, it's like at this point, we are literally just trading every day by the pure support of the Fed. And the only thing that I think could possibly break this or bring this, you know, bring this stock down, uh, the S&P, I should say, or the stock market down to reality to or I should say more in line with the economy is if the Fed just says, OK, we're going to stop pumping money to all the big institutions and stop giving away free money backed by the taxpayer money. That's the only thing I possibly can see at this point. You know, as I, as I stated in the last video, the Fed just pretty much has the uh, cheat button, has their finger um, on the markets and they, they put in the cheat codes. And so at this point, nothing matters. Earnings doesn't matter. Buying doesn't matter. Consumer, um, consumer price index doesn't matter. Nothing matters at this point. COVID infections, deaths, who cares, right? I mean, of course we care, but the market sure as hell don't seem to care because the entire way up here, this entire, um, this entire run up, it was all bad news. It was deaths, it was COVID, it was bad earnings, it was just everything. All bad news and the stock market just said, I don't care, I'm gonna keep going higher. So, you know, as I stated also in the previous video, the New York Fed president stated a few days ago, actually yesterday, that he thought that the worst of the coronavirus was behind us. And as I stated in that video, I don't know how that could possibly be the case, you know, unless he has a crystal ball or something. Uh, how could you possibly know whether or not the worst is behind us? You know, are you sure that this won't, that it won't mutate? Are you sure that, you know, we have a lockdown? I, I, I just don't know. You know, you know we, we still don't yet know the long-term economic impact of any of this. But relative to the markets, this is just pure Federal Reserve trading at this point. The technicals are mattering less and less and less at this point. You know, um, if you go back here and take a look at this resistance level, uh, you know, we were at the 50% support level here. And I thought we were going to see a relative decent pullback, at least down to the 38.2% Fibonacci. And we didn't. It hit 50 
it popped through right through 50 came back down not even halfway through that Fibonacci and then it continued on so like I said everything about this is just weird if you also notice the volume you notice how all of the volume here was just tons tons and tons of selling but then you look over here take a look at the um, at the recovery buying 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 but what do you notice the bars are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller do you know why they're getting smaller because no one is buying the damn stock market this is all Federal Reserve money if you're gonna trade this make sure that you guys just understand that at any point in time you could wake up in the morning typically bad news happens over the weekend and it could be the Fed has decided to stop doing their repos overnight it could be you know heaven forbid that the COVID has gotten worse it could be a number of things. It could be that the federal government actually does decide that they don't want to uh, extend the unemployment um, of perks of the $600 a week, which would just be a backbreaker. Uh, if that happened, I, I, we would probably retest lows and uh, the, the, the March lows and then some. And I don't think it would take long at all. So we don't know. But if you guys are going to trade this market, just make sure that you're being very diligent. Please make sure that you are, um, that you are uh, managing your risk. That's something that it took me years and years to understand um, as a trader. I lost thousands of dollars not understanding and managing risk. And this is something that a lot of new traders don't understand or that they don't put a lot of emphasis on. But managing risk is literally the game breaker uh, up uh, to, to make your account go up a lot or to lose all, all overnight. If you don't uh, purchase things based on support and if you're not purchasing uh, stocks or ETFs or whatever you like to whatever your um, your asset is um, relative to your account size so make sure that you never YOLO make sure that when you're in super volatile markets that you're just setting your stop losses accordingly um, you know right now in terms of day trading we're in a consolidation phase right there hasn't been very much uh, price action if you take a look at the daily take a look at the daily as to what occurred today we had uh, let's take a look here so let's take a, little, take a look at the daily today and we just pretty much ran right out of the gate it's just pretty much what happened we ran right out of the gate ran right out of the gate we stayed up we had a little bit of pullback you know maybe this overnight will come back and retest this 200 moving average who knows but that's just pretty much it you know make sure that you guys are you know buying off the 200 or you're buying off of the 100 you know just buying off support Make sure you only put in 15, 10, 20, 15, 20 percent of your of your portfolio if you are trading this. Make sure that you're setting your stop losses accordingly, and uh, you know, happy trading. So, uh, hopefully, this video was beneficial to you guys. Um, like I said, not a ton of actions or things to talk about today in the markets. Just relatively, uh, relatively, you know, flattish for the most part. Um, I do hope that you guys are making money in the markets and hope that these, that these videos are very beneficial for you. And if you guys do think it's beneficial, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And, you know, if you're new to the channel, uh, as a refresher, this is a stock education and a financial education channel. Uh, I've been doing uh, technical analysis videos on a daily basis. I will continue to do those. So if you guys are interested in getting an additional perspective and a technical analysis on the S&P and the overall markets, then please make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can get the latest on a daily basis with the overall market. Not only that, but also the latest news. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.